everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. This is going to be so much fun. Like, I'm, I'm so pumped to do this video. I have a little drawer in my closet. It's not like a whole one. It's not like I'm keeping every single thing I've ever used. I am crazy, but I'm not that crazy, okay? I've just got a drawer in like some storage drawers where I hold on to some things that I think are such iconic products from my makeup using life that I don't want to forget about them. Um, I'm not using these things. Absolutely not. They are way too old to use, but they're things that I think have really defined certain times here on YouTube. Um, if you want to know when this stuff is coming from, think back to apartment days. So um, like 2007, 2008, through the whole period where we were in our first house and I was in that bright pink makeup room, through kind of the time when this room was pink, like Pepto-Bismol pink. That is the span of time this stuff is coming from, okay? It's the kind of products that I would say are iconic. And why do I keep them? Well, um, I like to remember that kind of stuff. Also, I think it's just very easy to forget things. Once you've tossed them and thrown them away, like you can completely forget that certain things were like your ride or die product for a period of time. And I also think it's very interesting, particularly with drugstore makeup, how products get recycled over time time. Um, there may be something that was the latest, greatest, super hot thing, and then it kind of gets discontinued, disappears for a while, and then a new sort of version of that comes to the surface. And these products may kind of be proof of that, you know, when something goes away and comes back, and it's like, oh, that's just like that one thing that used to be out. I don't know, guys, I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but I've got eye stuff, face stuff, lip stuff, and this, I mean, it, it's iconic, and I wouldn't get rid of it, and it's the stuff that feels like one of these little drawer organizers. So yeah, let's jump in and chat about it. Where to begin? Um, how about this little guy here? Remember NYC? NYC Sunny? Just the best basic bronzer ever. You're going to see some major pan that's been hit on these products, my friends. Um, just classic matte bronzer. I remember swearing by this stuff. I have gone through, I don't know how many of them actually, but bronzer was, I remember, a pretty important part of my life during my news days. I really felt like the cameras, the lighting mainly washed me out a lot. So I wouldn't go a day without a good amount of bronzer. And this was the type of shade that was a little bit on the lighting and I could just go all over my face with it and really like deepen up my entire skin tone and give it some life on camera. So I use that a lot. Oh, here's another bronzer I loved, the Revlon Photo Ready that had like the four shades here. So this would be my deeper kind of like contour type bronzer, but that was great, was it not? I mean, it was matte. It had kind of a combination of tones so you could really customize it to the part of this bronzer that you wanted to be taking advantage of. Like if you want wanted a lighter bronze, you had it here. If you wanted the deeper, that was there too. That was so good. Bronzed and chic, that's what it was called. Oh my gosh, iconic blush, anyone? Say it with me, who knows about this? Milani Mai Tai. This was the Milani Mineral Blush, the perfect shade. I remember getting my mom into this and she has probably used one up even more severely than I have here. But like the perfect peachy pink blush and a great texture as well. You weren't scrubbing at that at all to get the color off. Found a couple of these box products like in the back of my um, blush drawer. Under this table where I sit, I've got some wide Alex drawers. And when you start getting all the way to the back of one of those drawers, like they kind of open to an extent, but there's that little back area that can kind of go untouched for a while. And that's where I found my hard candy fox in a box. Oh my gosh. They had some good products that looked like they were kind of duping different benefit things. Like this was sort of a sugar bomb dupe. And I just thought, oh, I'll have to pull that out and show. Um, do you remember benefit 10. Why is this not a thing anymore? Why is this product not coming back like in their reunion tour palette? I had totally forgotten about this, but this was great. Had like a nice shimmery bronzer to go like all over the skin and the most beautiful highlight. And I remember back in the day, Candy Johnson talked about this and it was one of very, very few high-end purchases I had ever made, like way back in my earliest makeup days. So I love that stuff. Dream Mousse Concealer y'all. Oh my gosh. I used this. I did hit pan in this, but now it's just like 
cracked. Um, I don't even want to touch it. This was such a phenomenal concealer formula. Um, you could say what you want about Dream Mousse Foundation. Some people might find that to be a little too like difficult to work with, maybe too cakey or whatever. I still like that stuff too. But the concealer was kind of a whole other perfect creamy consistency, you know? And so were the blushes. The blushes were great. I'm surprised I didn't keep a blush, but I did hold on to this and that was like such a great concealer. Oh, the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. Did we? Oh yeah, we hit major pan on that one. Oh, just touching it again. Like it's the softest, smoothest texture for a powder. So, so nice. I'm sure I just wore that like all over the face as kind of a setting powder type step or alone as powder foundation. Get ready for an iconic highlight. Before the highlighting craze got as big as it is now, um, there was this from Lorac, the Perfectly Lit Spotlight Powder. I had one that I completely hit pan on and then I found in my drawer somehow this fresh one. Like I had somehow gotten my hands, I think it was maybe on Hot Look or something, a fresh new one. Um, so this maybe I could start using again. It has this kind of beigey, like, is it really that shimmery kind of look? But the glow on this was always just like perfectly subtle, just like gentle, gentle lighting on the skin. Um, so that was cool that I found what appears to be a brand new one when I know I've used that up totally. And I also found this brand new Wet n Wild Creme Brulee. Do you remember people using this to set the under eye? Yeah, like it turned out to be the perfect kind of like coverage enhancing under eye setting powder. So I found a brand new one of those. I guess if I want to pull that out again, I don't know if they're, are they still making this shade? I'm not sure. But that's the face stuff, guys. Are you impressed? Are you having lots of moments of, oh yeah, I remember that. Let's go to the eyes. I kept two of my L'Oreal Hip High Intensity Pigments Duos. Remember these? Oh my gosh. I remember tracking these down at um, CVS when there would be some kind of a BOGO deal. And then I remember HIP kind of getting phased out and things would get to be like 75% off and CVS would do like a bin, like the actual bargain bin that you would be pawing through. And yeah, over there on the west side of Carbondale, man, I mean, there was not a lot of clientele at that CVS all the time. And so I would spend some real time like digging through. But this one, called Forgiving. I think that was like my first one. I was all about that dark brownish taupe there. And these would have been some of the most pigmented best drugstore shadows of their time. Um, this one called Cheeky. Remember the plummy shade and then this burgundy. Is that me or what? I had to hold on to those too. Also, the NYX Singles. Do you remember shopping for NYX Singles on cherryculture.com? Ah, this is the shade called Burgundy Pearl. So, you know, I love a color like that. I think at one point in time, I also depotted a bunch of these products, um, these singles, but I remember wanting to track down NYX in a big way. Um, on Cherry Culture. And then I remember my first ever trip to an Ulta period. We were in the other house and the nearest one was Fairview Heights, which is kind of outside St. Louis area, but a good like hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive for us. I remember there's also a furniture store there and we were getting a bunch of stuff for our new house. And then I had my first Ulta experience and I will never forget it. The palette I got was Too Faced Natural Eyes um, in the original cardboard type packaging and probably a bunch of NYX stuff too. The Essence Gel Liner in Midnight in Paris. Was this an iconic gel liner or what? And I can see that it's been used to the hilt. Like if you look at all the little brush strokes in there, it just looks flat out dark from where I'm sitting. But I use this so, so much, but it still does not look like a dried up liner. You know how some liners look like they kind of pull from the outsides. This still looks like something that could be used to this day, but that was such a great eyeliner, like the smoothest, never felt dry. You never felt any tug across the lash line. That was so good. We're going back now, like pre-YouTube, pre-even like moving to Southern Illinois. This CoverGirl trio, check out what I've done to that middle shade there. I mean, some of the most pan I've probably ever hit. This is the Eye Enhancers Trio and the shade is, it was Golden Sunset, yes. And that middle shade is called Golden Sunrise and it was like this coppery color. And oh, I've hit a fleck of pan on this shade as well. Um, but it was this beautiful shade that I think I was kind of using as a transition color before transition colors were cool. I mean, I remember putting it on my lid, but I would like blend things out with that. And then I tracked down that particular 
particular color in its own single Golden Sunrise, and I've got a big dent in this product as well, but you can just tell from the way this CoverGirl Trio is packaged, like that was around, like I was using that in college. Welcome to the Museum of Emily's Most Loved Products. Also drama eyes, anyone? Oh. I remember this winning like some early Emily Awards. Super pigmented, really great quad of shades. Some of my first experience using reddish burgundy tones on the eyes, and I remember just loving it to pieces. They had this great silver. The black was really pigmented and nice in here. Oh, love that. Oh, and speaking of NYX, back to NYX, do you remember when they were packaged like this in the trios? So you had a trio of three like round shadows. Again, with the warmth and the coppery kind of stuff. See, I liked warm tones even before all the shadows were coming out orange. This was the one with golden rust and walnut bronze, and I'm sure I snagged this one off of cherryculture.com, or sometimes I could go to Big Lots and they would have some NYX stuff there that I could dig through. I was like a complete bargain hunter. Triple shadows for sexy babes eyes only. I love that they put that on there. Oh, and then I saved these. Wet n Wild needs to bring these back. This was some of the best of Wet n Wild. This was like the height of Wet n Wild eyeshadow quality. Remember the Lust palette? Okay, they're these six color like square, a little rectangle um, shades in here, and the quality, the pigment was the best. You had three shimmers and three mattes. So that was your purple one. I mean, this was like Viseart before Viseart was Viseart. You know, with this half matte, half shimmer thing going on? Oh my God, if anybody from Wet n Wild is glancing at this video, this was your like top moment here. They were also riding high with like really good trios and stuff. I mean, there was walking on eggshells and I know they've kind of remade trios into quads now. That's fine. They're still nice or whatever, but these were like so, so good. The quality of the mats and shimmers were just like insanely good, high-end style. Here you had your three basics in this vanity palette and then your three shimmers over here. Hello? Did you sneak up? Somebody just got out of her bed, heard me doing this video, and snuck in. Mm. I love you. I love you, Mommy. Did you hear me talking? You can hang out in here if you want to. She likes to go over to the little desk and, and draw things on it. Can you shut the door though so we don't wake everybody else up? Okay, so there was the purple one, the neutral one, and then this one was gorgeous. This one called Greed. Look at these tones. Like that periwinkle blue, how unique. Um, the peachy shimmer, the charcoal, and then the mattes over there. I mean, this was some of Wet n Wild's all-time best stuff. I had to hang on to those. It doesn't even look like they've been super duper used from me. I mean, I think the purple one I used the most, but they were just so pigmented. You didn't need much of any of those shades when you dipped in. That was also probably getting to be a time where I just had a little more makeup on hand, you know, so I had more to bounce around between. Now, lip colors, guys. Um, this is just what I've held on to, what seemed to be stuff that I was loving like crazy. Remember the super lustrous lip gloss in Foiled? This was kind of like a lip topper for me. Um, it was that perfect shiny champagne color that you could wear over a nude lip and make it perfectly glossy or just kind of highlight the center of your lower lip. Also, how iconic was that Revlon? packaging when the glosses look like that. I loved those. Remember when I was going on and on about the Sonia Kashuk Shine Lux Sheer in Sheer Pink Lust? These were so this was lipstick and gloss kind of fused into one, and this particular shade was the perfect nude color. It was so great. We're seeing this more with the L'Oreal Color Reshines, you know, the really shiny finish lip colors. So we're not without an option here, but Sonia Kashuk, that product was so good. Also, who could forget about the Revlon Lip Butters? I kept one of these around. This is the Wild Watermelon shade. This was a really fun color. I loved the brightness in that. It was kind of like like a fun red, very fresh looking color. I loved these. Um, I feel like they've kind of come out with lip butters all over again with these new, what are they called? Uh, melting glass shine or whatever. Frankly, I liked when the caps were colored, the actual shade of the lipstick so things were easier to find in your collection. But they've got something again that's sort of that balmy stick format and definitely a lot of shine built in. To me, these new ones, while Revlon would probably argue that they're more moisturizing, I feel like 
like they're a little more on the greasy side than I remember these being, but I think they're definitely trying to bring a lip butter type product back to their collection. And then Maybelline's answer to the lip butters were these color whispers. And I remember these feeling a little bit more like a standard lipstick and a little bit less like that glossy lip balm, but they were still like super easy, low maintenance colors to throw on. I know these shades were two of my favorites. Lust for Blush was a really great um, nude option here. A little bit cooler, more pinky nude than the Lust for Blush. But I just loved their format with these. I loved how the cap showed what color was on the inside. And then we have Berry Ready here, a beautiful berry. Those were so good. I feel like if Maybelline or Revlon just flat out brought back, like, hey, here's lip butters and brought them back just the way they were, or brought back color whispers, like, people would love that. You don't always have to reinvent something, just like, bring it back. And then finally, we have this, guys. Does anybody remember what color this was? NYX called this color beige. I don't know why. It's a beautiful pink gloss. I feel like everybody had it. Um, it's the NYX Mega Shine Lip Gloss, one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. And um, yeah, I definitely held on to that color. I found a few other ones in my drawer too um, that I had back in there, but this was the most iconic, I think. So thank you. Oh, I love you too, sweetie. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like taking this little walk down memory lane, looking at some products that have not been talked about by me or anybody else in quite some time. Um, let me know in the comments section, do you remember any of this stuff or do you have other things that I didn't pull out here that um, you'd like to talk about? Uh, let's discuss. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. What are you doing over there in your little office? A picture for my sister. Oh, you're drawing a picture for your sister. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah.